my name is uh, Helena Alfirevich Arbutina. I'm licensed architect and interior designer. And uh, today I will talk to you about interior design for residential homes. Uh, just need to check if uh, the screen is shared. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, when we talk about interiors, uh, it's important to know that uh, we all uh, has to have a conscious way of living. That means that the uh, residential interiors are in the center stage of uh, 2020 because of the pandemic and more of, and more people are spending their time at homes. Uh, even before uh, Western men spend like 80 to 90% in the closed spaces in the interiors, but nowadays it's uh, mostly homes. And uh, if we want to have conscious living, uh, we should take into consideration our own values uh, to meditate, pray, or uh, have some kind of uh, relaxation technique, then uh, have the reflection of a day or the month and uh, have, as I call it, happy plate. That means that uh, each day you should find something that uh, you should be happy about. And uh, like in this, uh, in this uh, respect, uh, I have this uh, bowl full of apples there from my garden and uh, they don't have any pesticide. So while I take a break during the work, I just go to the garden and pick up some fresh apples or fruit during the autumn. Then we have to take into consideration the impact on our plan planet. We have to be uh, aware of the ecological possible catastrophe and uh, we have to uh, think about uh, new ways of using materials. We have to be conscious about our money spending, about eating, uh, it all affects our health problems. And we should be conscious about communicating uh, that means to listen carefully, which I'm not always very good at. And uh, we have to know that making mistakes are okay. We're all humans, but it's the best when you learn from other people's mistake. Well, when uh, we want to live this way uh, in conscious way, we have to take care of our mind and soul. And uh, in order to do this, uh, we have to have some corners to listen to music, read books, watch inspiring movies, documentaries, take an online course like this one, pray or meditate, and uh, we, we should have our own space to do it. I like this example in interior because uh, it doesn't have to be the whole interior designed for uh, taking care of mind and soul, but... Um, it's a really nice window where you can relax or read a book. And uh, while you get tired reading the book, it's just enough to look through the, this nice big window to the nature and uh, your eyes feel relax immediately. Uh, besides our souls, uh, we have to take care of, of our body. In order to do this, we like to cook and prepare uh, and eat uh, well-prepared food. Uh, then we, of course, take a bath or shower. And uh, if we are lucky, we can even use sauna or jacuzzi or swimming in the swimming pool. Uh, I really like this design of uh, a bathroom where you can first take a shower and then take a bath. When your body is clean like Japanese and uh, have a nice look into the nature. It's like you're connected to the nature itself. Uh, these are uh, pictures of my families and friends. Uh, I wanted to emphasize that uh, when we create interior designs, uh, we have to socialize as well. It's not just outside of our homes, it's also in our homes. So this is my family in our swimming pool uh, in my house. On uh, It's called Casablanca on island Chiovo. Uh, and uh, my friends came over when, it, when there was no pandemic for a lunch or dinner and uh, we should pull. Of course, we go to the beach together. It's really important that uh, we socialize. Other from this 
uh, main aspects uh, what we have to take care of. There are some basic postulates in uh, designing of interiors that every architect and interior designer has to uh, think about. Uh, for me, the most important one is to understand the client, to get the, to know the client. So sometimes at the beginning when some uh, clients approach me, I always talk with them about their view on uh, interior because uh, not every uh, interior is modern. Someone thinks something is modern and it's actually not. And uh, I would really uh, like to be able to make the best interior for the client. Uh, you have to act like a shrink or a priest to this client because uh, they have to tell, the, uh, tell you all of their secrets and their basic needs in this interior. Sometimes uh, maybe they don't in, even understand these needs. So you have to be in that role to um, take this out from them and uh, it takes a lot of uh, communication and a lot of education on both sides. But uh, it's somehow important that you are compatible. Uh, I sh I'm showing you my example of the house of war in Osijek that I designed with my team. Uh, I was lucky, lucky to create uh, the house from the beginning and uh, even in interior with the respecting of client's wishes. And uh, when I told you that you have to know the client as an architect, I would never uh, put a window on the north. But uh, this particular site has a, had a beautiful view to the river Sava, uh, Drava in Osik. So um, I decided to put a gallery to enjoy that view. And also talking to a client, he really preferred the light from the north. So it was um, good uh, to emphasize that. Also in this house of four, uh, there is some light from the south as well. And uh, not only just the daylight, but it's a beautiful view to the in, to their inner courtyard. And then besides uh, getting to know the client, uh, every architect and interior designer has to take care of function and aesthetics. Um, Function is a must, every home must be functional like any interior space and architecture. If it's not that, then it's not um, interior design or architecture, then it's just uh, some abstract art. Then in this particular uh, case, I designed three villa from the start, uh, from the start and uh, I also uh, was hired to do interior design uh, respecting all of the client's wishes. But uh, here the view and the uh, permutation of interior and exterior were the main uh, role in, in this interior design. Uh, when we talk about aesthetics, uh, there could be different uh, opinions about aesthetics, but I think uh, that uh, architect in, and interior designer should uh, have their own um, signature on this that you're rec recognizable. Then uh, there is mood creation in interior design and uh, it's really important uh, to uh, engage all the senses, uh, all of your five sen senses to create a cozy, inspiring, invigorating atmosphere. Uh, cozy atmosphere could be done by throwing some blankets, soft and pillows. And then uh, relaxing, you can put fireplace and candles. Uh, and then, you, uh, especially nowadays, it's good to put um, this humifier because the air gets dry from the central heating. And in pandemic, uh, you shouldn't have a sore throat. But then, um, uh, regardless of these basic postulates, in order to have 21st century interior, uh, we should think of a conscious home and contemporary interior design in the ways of sustainability, biophilic design and smart homes. And as I already mentioned, uh, functionality is very important and could uh, improve quality of life. And uh, these are the two main components of interior design. 
when we talk about sustainability, then there are uh, several things that we have to think about. It's uh, natural paint uh, to upcycle the products, uh, use sustainable sourced furniture, then to use new materials and at the end to declutter or um, not to buy new things if you really don't need them. Uh, when we talk about natural paint, uh, there is a lot of illnesses caused by uh, using uh, regular paint that uh, people used to use. And it's like uh, diseases such as throat irritation and headaches, liver and uh, nervous system disturbances, and uh, unfortunately even cancer. Uh, so uh, you should really avoid this kind of paints. Uh, then what means to upcycle? Just uh, if you can afford and you like to have new pieces of furniture, but the old one are still uh, usable, don't throw it away, then rather give it to the charity. It's uh, really conscious living. Uh, when we talk about sustainable sourced furniture, you could use uh, teak or oak that are reclaimed, especially in Croatia, oak is a uh, widely used resource in furniture design and uh, Croatian designers have a slogan that says uh, uh, that means uh, what comes first or you can use even the old pallets to uh, create new furniture like in this example in the living room with a made sofa. Uh, then uh, you should think about new materials uh, new materials uh, are uh, really interesting when you think about uh, alternative leather, uh, the maybe uh, widely used, uh, this leather is Pinatex. It's uh, one of the most innovative and sustainable leather on the market and it's, it's uh, essentially made of face parts of pineapple plants and uh, it's socially and environmentally responsible. Uh, you can see the examples of this uh, alternative leather here. Uh, I really like that uh, fact that they have also the metallic uh, effect on it, like sil silver and gold, which are rather trendy nowadays. Then we have this Q-brick, and it's made of 90% uh, made from uh, construction waste materials. It was created by Professor uh, Gabriela Medero at Edinburgh's uh, Heriot Watt University. Uh, it has the same weight as a um, regular brick, but it's uh, much better bit because it has uh, effective insulation properties and it generates uh, less than 10% of the carbon emission uh, during the manufacture uh, because uh, you don't have to involve heating in producing this brick. Uh, then we have, uh, we have this put on concrete uh, panels. Uh, they are uh, uh, concrete panels that are created by uh, pressing and cut uh, substance between two form matrices with extruded cells. Uh, they, had, uh, they have a wide range of usage. It's like uh, acoustic walls, uh, ceilings, and even green walls. And uh, due to its 3D uh, structure, uh, that flat panels use 80% less of concrete compared with solid concrete panels with the same resistance. Uh, we have uh, one of the most innovative material trends in 2020, it's FIDO technology created by Polish company Zieta. It's really interesting because it uh, makes this uh, bionic shapes and uh, they're fully recyclable objects using mass production processes and some tailored methods. And because they are light in the construction, they're also um, now being used outside and even for the facades. Uh, there are some other uh, materials that are already well known, but are widely used and they are Corian, Hymex and Getacore. They're uh, in two thirds 
of their substance, substances, their uh, natural stone, and one third is uh, some uh, compound uh, that, that's uh, not uh, found in the nature. And then we have this uh, micro cement and micro topping. Uh, I use them in uh, my kitchen for creating the uh, this top and then for the floor. And, uh, it's also important to emphasize that uh, you could use uh, some old materials, but uh, they are renewed like bamboo, cork, rattan, stone, wood, and glass. And especially when we talk about glass, we have this e-glass and is uh, controlled by different electrical features like thermostats or uh, snow, detect snow detectors. And the laminated version is often used for interior applications like uh, glass separation walls that heat on both sides and give comfort or replaces the main heating system. Uh, then uh, it's important to talk about uh, biophilic design. Uh, the basic uh, definition would be that uh, biophilia is bringing nature into interior design and it's the idea that human possesses an uh, innate tendency to seek connections with nature. In ancient Greek, philia would mean the love of. So uh, it's not just uh, in this design when you think that uh, it's just using the plants. Plants are important, but there is also uh, emphasis on open spaces and uh, interior uh, exterior permutation where you put the nature inside uh, and then uh, uses usage of uh, daylight uh, there is a professor there was a professor emeritus at Yale University uh, Stephen R Kellert and uh, he said this uh, biophilia to become uh, it, it became a, a basic standard for the uh, designing and uh, he responds to man-made environmental problems with practical and creative solutions based on uh, re-establishing conviviality with nature in the built environment. Um, when we talk about plants in the biophilic designs, we have to know that plants help uh, to filter out harmful uh, chemicals in the air by providing more oxygen and their natural in their beauty and freshness to any space. Uh, really good plants to uh, improve air qualities are bamboo palms, aloe vera, peace lilies, and ferns. And uh, they can even soften the edges in the interior. And also if you put flowers, then you will bring some vivid colors to interior. But uh, you have to be careful with uh, uh, using the plants in the interior not to overcome this uh, because uh, the functionality comes first. So uh, I put this picture of uh, Uma Thurman from the movie. It's called Poison Ivy, so don't be like her in that movie. Uh, why is the biophilic design rele rele relevant today? I'm sorry, uh, because uh, the, the World Health Organization uh, expects that stress-related illnesses such as mental health disorders and cardiovascular disease are the two largest contributors to diseases by 2020. Now we also have this pandemic, so if we would, uh, with biophilic design, create more natural spaces uh, for the people, then we would uh, feel physically and psychologically much healthier. So uh, incorporating direct or in indirect elements of nature into the built environment uh, are demonstrating through the research to reduce stress, blood pressure levels and uh, heart rates while increasing the productivity, crea uh, creativity and self-reported rates of well-being. This is a good example of uh, biophilic design in the bathroom. Uh, I think uh, we already mentioned all of these elements. Some other interesting examples of biophilic design in interior. 
And now I'm coming to this uh, house of war from Osik back again because um, it's easier to uh, use my own uh, examples uh, than to uh, get the permission from some pictures from the internet. Uh, this is the room of the teenager where you can see the permutation of uh, exterior and interior and bringing a lot of daylight and nature into the room. And then the same thing done in the house uh, when you uh, exercise in the gym. You look in the South Patio with the uh, yard. And also there is in this house uh, the inner atrium, which you can see from the entrance of the house, but also you can see on the other side from the gym. And uh, also there is a uh, uh, lots of daylight and uh, uh, natural wood on the stairs. Now we are coming to my home. Uh, since I was very lucky to inherit this ha uh, house from my parents, they built it in the 80s. Uh, I was able to uh, redecorate it later to be more in the up to date with 21st century. Uh, the first thing I did was uh, to bring the exterior into the interior because there is a beautiful garden outside with a lot of greenery. And uh, that way I also put a lot of daylight into the place and uh, I used natural uh, materials as stones and uh, this uh, wood and glass. So I love this fireplace. Uh, when we talk about smart homes, uh, we have to talk about um, uh, actually automation, then uh, HVAC and smart furniture and uh, LED lights. Uh, automation means that uh, you would use it for the IP video surveillance, for the uh, lightning uh, for speakers like Alexa and uh, to move the current curtains or blinds outside. And uh, I could uh, talk to you a lot about smart homes, but uh, I think that uh, this video would tell you much more about it than I could present it in words. So for a moment, I will stop sharing this screen and start uh, sharing the video, just a second.
Okay, now you can watch this other video. Uh, it's like uh, when you leave the house for a vacation, some things that you don't have to think about. Okay, now uh, going back to presentation. Okay, uh, the Lutron actually started uh, this story with uh, a smart home in the small laboratory in New York City. There was a physicist who was uh, fascinated by aesthetic manipulation of light and he uh, first tried it in his bedroom in his apartment. And ever since then, uh, they were growing um, in the, their development of uh, lighting control. And uh, I would say the 2000, year 2000 was especially important because uh, they developed uh, a lot of um, things uh, that uh, bring, uh, bring uh, energy saving throughout the buildings. So uh, we have these thermostats and then we have room controls, then we have air conditioning management. Uh, this air conditioning management is uh, especially interesting uh, when you rent uh, a place uh, even during the summer when uh, tourists leave and uh, leave the door open and uh, leave the air conditioning cooling then if you have this system, then the air conditioning will shut uh, immediately. And the same time during the winter, if you go to the apartment for skiing, uh, you have heating inside. If you don't close the windows, the heating will stop. Then we think, have uh, things like Google Home, then uh, Nest Thermostat. It's like a small brain. It records your home energy and use over the week and then helps you adjust accordingly to save energy. Then uh, for smart homes, uh, it's really important to have smart furniture inside it. Like on the, this slide, uh, really interesting is uh, Smart Kitchen by to uh, Tony Celli, which it has implemented um, Samsung Galaxy tablet. Uh, that means while you cook, you can find the recipe there or uh, you can uh, check the weather or read the news. Um, uh, for me, it's just enough to cook uh, and talk to my kids, but uh, someone who is living alone maybe could do all of these things all at once. And then there is this uh, smart refrigerator. It can send you a message on your uh, tablet or phone that uh, you forgot to close the door. It's also energy efficient. We have uh, uh, machines for washing clothes that are smart as well. Then this uh, little robot that cleans floors or, or uh, um, then we have some gadgets like uh, smart kitchen appliances. This is this uh, Jenny can. You put it next to the trash can and it scans the items that you throw away and uh, it puts them on the grocery list to remind you what you should buy because you ran out of it. Uh, also, in this furniture, we should never forget about our bathrooms. And uh, we have these smart showers. Then Gibberit always uh, makes some innovations 
they made this uh, smart uh, aqua, uh, aqua clean uh, toilet. It's not just for toilet usage, but you can wash yourselves after using the toilet and uh, like a bidet, but more sophisticated one. It also cleans itself. And then uh, Roca design uh, was really good in uh, sustainable usage of water. When you wash your hands, then it flushes your toilet. So this uh, water is not thrown away. Then there are some other examples with this uh, really smart bathtubs. Uh, the way you uh, climb it, then you can use a percentage of water. This is uh, my favorite design for the washing hands. And uh, this is really nice design for taking shower outside. Almost every home has a smart TV, Android. So you all know what you can do uh, with this TV, but uh, there is more smart furniture as this smart furniture beds or a Sobro uh, coffee table. Uh, this coffee table uh, is uh, innovation that is uh, rather um, big after the remote control in the living room and it's designed to uh, refrigerate. Uh, it has refrigerated drawer. It has in implemented Bluetooth speakers. It can. It has charging ports, some LED lights. So it's uh, really interesting. But uh, what's important about uh, advantages of smart home is that uh, it uh, this technology promises huge benefits for older people living alone. Uh, as you could see in the video, it takes care whether you uh, left the water um, overflowing the tub or the stove. Uh, is if you left something that is cooking on the stove, so it uh, signalizes then uh, for elder people, it's good to notify the hospital if the residential falls. And uh, it's smart homes are uh, big savers. They save a lot of energy by control lighting. Then with window covers, uh, covering, air conditioning, thermal insulation of walls. And uh, I also want to present this. It's not in the interior, it's in the exterior, but uh, big creations are proud of it. It's smart bench. Uh, it was uh, designed by Ivan Mrvoš from uh, Small Place Solin. And uh, when we talk about futuristic interiors, I will show you some examples. And uh, they're not uh, some examples that will happen in the future. They happen, they're happening right now. Uh, this is one good example of futuri futuristic villa in Vienna by projects uh, AO1 Architects. Uh, I like to uh, educate my clients uh, that uh, like everyone would uh, wear something that's not uh, from the 70s um, when you have to wear a new coat or a blouse or if you have to drive a car you would drive a car that was produced now not uh, if not in the 70s except if you have an old timer but uh, with um, architecture and interior design, people are a little bit more suspicious and they stick to the stuff they know. So we should continue educating and to embrace this kind of architecture and interior design. Um, another good example is by architect uh, Anne Fai Chen in Vienna. It's this uh, crystal clear apartment uh, and it's uh, crystal clear while it's cold that way because it's all white and shiny. Uh, again, we can see this open space to get uh, connected together. Then there is a good example of uh, architect Andre Chudinov in Kazakhstan, in Astana. This is the 120 square meter apartment. And again, we have uh, emphasis here on the home office because uh, nowadays we uh, are witnessing this situation is more and more important. Uh, I will try to uh, share this uh, animation with you now because it's uh, interesting uh, cave uh, 
for suit. So let me try this now, just a second. Okay. This is the concept. I have to share a presentation again. And uh, this is an uh, interesting act uh, created by um, one of my favorite architects and designers ever since my uh, school days, Zaha Hadid. Uh, unfortunately, she deceased but uh, deceased, but uh, her office is still working. And uh, this beautiful yacht uh, was made in cooperation with Bloom and was a shipyard. And uh, it's 128 meters uh, master prototype and uh, it will um, engage uh, fully engineered 19 meters uh, unique circle yachts. Uh, according to Hadid, the overall design uh, is uh, informed by fluid dynamics and underwater ecosystems with hydrodynamic research shaping the design of the hull. I think it's uh, rather fascinating. Just a second. Okay. Um, and uh, this interior design is not uh, designed by architect or interior designer, but uh, by freelancer 3D artist who is making uh, visualizations. And uh, this really reminds me of uh, one thing that uh, I will reveal to you later. So this is his concept. Please uh, look at this uh, kitchen with the robot. Uh, the all the furniture for interior design. And uh, now we are coming back to the present, not to the future, to emphasize the uh, trends that will shape the next decade. And uh, it will be uh, by, uh, I will describe it by the Paula Mora uh, for Arch Daily. Uh, I read this article, Interior Design Threat, Trends that will shape the next decade. And besides all of these thing that, uh, things that I was telling you about, like biophilic design, smart homes, and sust sustainability, uh, there is also chubby design with these uh, chubby uh, chairs and coffee tables. Then arches, uh, arches uh, appear in interior design, but uh, not only through actual structures, but also through some drawings on the walls. And then uh, what's really important, uh, what we talked about already is this mini study. It's an accent in this decade because uh, obviously uh, we will have to work from home more and more. Uh, and um, uh, if you don't have uh, the whole room for yourself for a study room, it's uh, practical when you have this mini study incorporated into the house. 
Then uh, there are invisible uh, handles for a fully integra integrated kitchen. And um, again, I showed the house of four with this kitchen with, um, you just have to push uh, the element, it comes out, you don't have a handle or there is a slight division bet between upper part and the lower part and with that way you can pull out the drawer. And then uh, the ne next interesting element is stairs integrated with the furniture. And there are lots of examples with this. Uh, this is one really uh, fascinating example, like a sculpture going up to the gallery, but uh, there are also examples for bookshelves beneath it or some storages, or there are numerous ways. Then we have colorful, colorful bathrooms and uh, uh, using of uh, terrazzo floors and uh, for floors and uh, walls. And also we have extensively use uh, of natural materials such as wood and concrete. And again, I would like to show you this uh, interior design trends from YouTube, but uh, I think uh, we are running out of time. So maybe uh, you can uh, watch it yourself because you can find it on YouTube. Uh, then for the conclusion, this is uh, an interesting example of our uh, interior uh, creates a psychological effect of the space. Uh, beside the usage of the new materials, we have the usage of the natural materials and textures. And then uh, for the conclusion, I always like to come to the movies from the James Bond from 60s to nowadays, because they always have futuristic interior designs. And uh, the, these sets are created by uh, Sir Ken Adams. Uh, even nowadays, what you, if you watch something from the 60s, it's even more than futuristic today. And then there is this movie Oblivion made in 2013, and uh, it's by Tom Cruise. Uh, Tom Cruise is uh, actually an uh, actor in this movie, but I wanted to emphasize the previous design that uh, you saw this uh, Finland's uh, archivist uh, from the Spain. Uh, it reminds me of this movie Oblivion and this interior design. And um, I always like to watch Star Trek and uh, Seven of Nine would say, Resistance is futile, so um, she meant it on the board, but uh, I want to say to my clients and to that uh, resistance is futile when we think about uh, futuristic interiors, they're uh, becoming part of our lives. Uh, now a little bit about me. This is my home. Uh, it's uh, in the suburbs of Zagreb. And... Uh, it's also my uh, living space and workspace. Um, it, uh, I started to work in my home uh, much uh, more before pandemic. Uh, it, there was a crisis with um, construction uh, engineering and uh, it affected also architects and interior designers. So in 2009, I, uh, nine, I told to uh, my directors that I think it would be better that I work from home and uh, just besides the money savings uh, I have much better quality of life because uh, before I used to have 45 minutes uh, in each direction to the work then during the break I would be uh, surrounded by the concrete in the city and now I enjoy my uh, green garden and also uh, I uh, save some uh, time and I have more time for my kids and uh, friends and family. So uh, this is the spot uh, where I uh, sit and uh, look over uh, the living room into this nice view. This is my uh, table where I sit right now. And this is important part of my home. It's the kitchen because I like to cook. But uh, also, nevertheless, uh, the bathroom, which I call wellness bathroom, 
because I used to put a small Finnish sauna uh, inside it, which I enjoy uh, once a week uh, regularly. And uh, it's really good for relaxation. Uh, I'm also happy that uh, I have place to exercise. So now during pandemic, uh, my uh, Tai Chi groups uh, calls me and uh, we all exercise on Zoom. And uh, this is another house on the seashore uh, on the island Chiovo. Uh, I bought it half built and I finished it. Uh, I rent it, uh, but my children, as you have seen it on the slide much uh, earlier, uh, they, they really enjoy when uh, someone cancels uh, and they don't come because then they can spend some time in that house. Uh, this is the wall made by a uh, local stone and it was uh, made by previous, uh, previous horn owner. So it's a vein of sustainability in the interior. And uh, in the end, I want to emphasize that the most, um, that the best thing in interior is uh, if you have a nice view to the exterior as I was uh, happy to have this. And uh, from this sofa in the living room, I can enjoy a really, really nice view to the outside to the sea and the city of Trogir. And uh, during the nights, I uh, prefer sleeping on this sofa, not in the bedroom, uh, because then I can see the stars uh, outside. So uh, that's uh, about this from me for now and um, maybe there, there will be some other videos. Uh, thank you for your attention. I want to thank to Design Expo uh, for being able to organize this uh, virtual expo fair and also uh, this uh, webinar. If you have any other questions, uh, I will be here for 20 minutes for you. I will read them and uh, I will answer your questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have just uh, some uh, comments that uh, it looks great and uh, thank you for your good wishes. Grozdana uh, Grubišić Popović and Roko uh, Cetinjan and Vesna Gazić. Uh, the color of 2021 will break green. Uh, I, you can read this in this article and uh, it has to do with this biophilic design. Uh, the, the article is uh, by Paul Mora. Uh, thank you, Vesna. Uh, I had a question uh, about uh, how much uh, cost uh, smart home regarding, regardless to the normal home. And uh, it's hard to tell because the prices of uh, building of regular home are rising uh, due to the lack of workforce. But uh, I would say that it's like 30% of higher than the regular home. The material of the furniture in the trend of 2021. Uh, yes, uh, it could be leather, but more this uh, uh, natural leather that uh, I showed, uh, made like from pineapple and... Uh, okay. I guess everything was uh, clear in the presentation and uh, you can uh, watch it uh, okay, again on YouTube. And there, there, there are some links uh, that you can check out uh, because we didn't have ta enough time to go over all of these links, but I think they're interesting. And uh, once more, I would like to uh, thank to Design Expo and to Slavko Gazic to organizing uh, 
all of this. You'll uh, check these slides. Uh, just a second. In my uh, home, I don't have curtains because uh, I like uh, I, I like to have a clear view to the nature. But uh, like on my uh, home uh, on the coast, I have to have curtains because I rent this house and uh, it's the law to have them. And also about the carpets, um, it's upon the client, but uh, if there is um, if there is uh, heating uh, from the floor, then uh, it's not good to use the carpets. But uh, there are these uh, kind of wooden floors, uh, parquets with uh, three layers that uh, you can use on the heating from the floor. So it doesn't have to be only cold ceramic tiles so, or such a, another cold material. Okay. understood from the presentation. Okay, thank you for your attention. And uh, you have my contacts here. Uh, I work uh, for uh, HD Spatium, so uh, you can still send me an email or um, text me on WhatsApp and uh, I'll give you an answer. Uh, have a nice uh, rest of the day. Thank you.